Hello, this is the whole Christmas pudding movie. Uh, not directed by Steven Spielberg or anyone else well known. There is quite a bit of work involved with this and a lot of it is preparation work. So what I'm doing now, and you can see I fast forwarded this because watching me weigh out ingredients is probably quite boring. So I've weighed out the raisins, I've weighed out the currants, I've weighed, weighed out the mixed peel. I've weighed out the prunes, which I'm now going to chop. Okay. Um, yeah, the recipe is from the Old English, which is in pounds and ounces, but I'm a metric child, so I don't understand pounds and ounces. So it's been converted to grams and milliliters. So weigh them out, put the fruit into a bowl, the, the dried fruit into a bowl, mix it up with your fingertips, wash your hands, and then we're going to do the wet fruit. Now it's apples and carrots and the juice of one lemon with the zest. I must have been on speed the day I did this, I'm peeling so fast. I prefer to grate it fairly finely, it just gives you a nicer result in the Christmas pudding. Now I'm doing an experiment, I'm trying for a lighter Christmas pudding in this recipe, so I've left out one ingredient and that's the molasses which is basically black syrup. Okay, uh, clean up as you go along, all that sort of thing. Next we're going to do some carrots. So at this point I've got the dried fruit in a bowl and I'm going to have the wet fruit and vegetables in another bowl. We're going to mix it all together a bit later on. The grams, uh, the recipe itself is on the page before that you came from to get to here. So please feel free to use that. There is a shopping list that goes with it. So yeah, this is about six minutes and if you really want to slow down and watch me grate carrots then you can use the um, toolbar on YouTube. It's two tablespoons of carrots. There we go. If you have a little bit left that's fine too. Now we're going to do dry ingredients. Breadcrumbs. The bread breadcrumbs you don't have to sift. However, the rest of the ingredients you do. The flour and then we're going to do spices. We're going to do cinnamon, we're going to do cloves, we're going to do mixed spice, we're going to do ginger and I think there's some nutmeg in there too and some salt and a tablespoon of baking powder. So we're going to sift that out and make sure we get rid of any chunky bits. Okay now here comes one of those choices. I'm using wholesome which is a white margarine. Um, it looks quite nasty because it doesn't have that nice yellow color that they use or you can use suet. If you use suet, when you cream this whole lot, um, it's not actually going to cream up nicely because the suet doesn't dissolve. But don't worry about that. Add the eggs. The eggs will actually help you to dissolve the sugar. Okay, so at this point we've got a bowl with the fruit dried. We've got a bowl with the wet fruit. We've got the brandy in a jug and we'll have this mixture here which is the eggs and the butter and sugar, or the margarine and sugar in this case. Okay, So give it a good whipping and take it out, there we go. Okay, so now we're going to mix the fruit into the, the wet fruit into the dried fruit. We're going to add the brandy and then we're going to add the flour. Okay, at this point it might be useful for you to use your fingers to get it to mix through thoroughly so that the fruit is evenly coated by the flour. Okay, last step of the mixing process is to add the wet ingredients. There we go. Give it a good stir up. And then comes the most important part as far as the traditions are concerned for the making of the Christmas pudding. Okay, you can see the whole family coming up. That's my son doing his stir and make a wish. He apparently wished for a Ferrari, that's why he stirred it for so long. And then you can see each member of the family comes up, stirs the pudding, and makes a wish. You're not actually supposed to tell anyone what the wish is. Um, otherwise, of course, it won't come true. Like I say, Declan is busy wishing for a Ferrari as we speak. There we go. Julie's saying, go away. Her turn. And you can make it an elaborate stir, like you have to stir it anti-clockwise three times. In our household, it's boyfriends, girlfriends, anyone who happens to be in the household 
on the day of the making of this pudding who gets to do a stir and and make a wish. Okay, the most elaborate part of this entire recipe is actually what happens to the dessert once you have now actually mixed it up. This you can stick in the fridge and cook tomorrow because only once it's heated will the baking powder be activated. So what we do here is we fill the bowls to about two-thirds full and we pat them down. Now this amount makes quite a bit. I generally give one or two of these away as Christmas presents as well. Uh, they're family members who rely on me to do this. We're just evening it out so that the one bowl is not too full. Now comes the difficult part. Well, it's not difficult, it's just elaborate. Notice how Julie is folding this. You fold a pleat into the, the wax paper and then you tie it down. So here we go again. Show us how you do the pleat. Fold it once fold it twice. It's easier if you have two people to do this. Get one person to hold the waxproof paper down and the other person to tie it on with a piece of string. Now, I like to do it once with waxproof and once with tin foil. That makes sure that there ain't no water getting into this puppy when we actually get to the point where we're going to cook it. Okay, so we tie it, we cut off the excess string and then magic of TV we do the other two really quickly. Watch this. Isn't this fast? There we go. Other two are done. We cut the excess paper off around the edges. There we go. Julie doesn't trust me with sharp things near her fingers. So cut the excess paper off. And then we're going to do exactly the same pleat. The pleat is very important so that you don't get... If the, if the cake does rise, it doesn't then press up against the, the, the wax proof. Okay. So we're going to do exactly the same pleat with tin foil. There we go. It's much easier if you have two people to do this with. Okay, the last step is, now picture this. We're going to put this into a pot of boiling water. So you put this into the water. How are you going to get it in? How are you going to get it out? Place it in a fabric square. Tie two knots in it. Binding the corners opposite ends. And that's how you get it in and out. Now, you're going to cook this for between four and a half and five hours to make sure it's, it's cooked through. Make sure that the pot doesn't boil dry, and remember, take all of this off once you're finished, put fresh waxproof paper on it, and every week give it a couple of cups of brandy. You won't go wrong. You will absolutely adore this. I hope you enjoy.